I wasn't originally planning on making this quick video because, well, if you've watched a single one of my videos before, you know that me and Limbus get on together like opposite ends of magnets. We don't click. I didn't make a video for Canto 4 when it released, but that's just because I wasn't impressed in all honesty. The chapter brought nice art and cool music, but it was overly long, filled with filler, downright disappointing at parts, and harbors what is still my least favourite boss, to name a few things. I did however talk about 4.5 when it was released, because I enjoyed it. Just a little pacing went a really long way, and it was nice to have a sinner chapter about the sinners for once, and not have to deal with some big bad group of filler syndicate or court members or blood boiling writing getting in the way. It was just the sinners shooting the shit for a few scenes, but it kept itself grounded and serious. In the end of that video, I said that I was looking forward to Canto 5, and that I didn't want the video to age like milk. And it didn't age like milk so to say, but more like... water? I am making this video right now after spending 12 hours straight beating Canto 5 from beginning to end in one setting, and I can confidently say that I did enjoy it. I honestly and truly did, and that fact alone fills me with giddy joy. Now, that being said, I do have my issues with it, don't get me wrong. I won't go too into detail on them right now because this isn't like a full chapter review so to speak. I personally want to keep my critiques on the entire main story for Limbus in my Limbus retrospective that I'll do sometime in the future. But it will be after my Lobcorp and Runa ones that I'll do at 10k subs. But I did want to talk about some things that I think PM did really well and some that I think are a bit too annoying to ignore. So warning, full spoilers ahead for Canto 5. First and foremost, let's talk about the white whale in the room, the new CG art. I quite like it because it looks like Rune is CG, it's just a lot sharper and clearer. Now, they do look slightly rushed and some characters need to see a cryopractor, but overall I love this style and I think it's one PM should have stuck with since day one. And I don't mean to bash Valmori's art, I love that a ton too, she drew a very cute Faust, but I have a fanboy soft spot for the Runa style. Other than that, the general background art and the animations of this chapter were top notch, but that's expected from the art team. I hope to see more animations in the future. The new characters introduced, both good and bad, are a very mixed bag. Smee is really cute and I loved her a ton, but Pilot is just kind of annoying to be honest. And I really hate the joke where Heathcliff says we spared his life. Project Moon. Rubbing shoulders with the fans and being like, boy, don't we love to kill off characters. It's not charming, it's cringy. And on that note, I'm not sure how many times I've said it, but I have a lot. That Effie and Sod were annoying pricks, and I'm glad they're dead. So all the sinners mourning Effie here was just a serious drag It took me right out of the immersion. However, Ricardo is tying Hopkins and Herman for my favourite villain in the game now because of his exaggerated swagger. That is cool ass boss fight. Though the reason for fighting him is a little too silly for my tastes, I think Heath getting the coupons off camera was a bad idea. What if, for example, Smee gave us the tickets as a plead for her life? The sinners at first would be massively confused, the player too, but Heath would take them anyways because why not? But he'd be completely unaware that Smee will frame them for a robbery and sign their death warrant. This would keep the pettiness of Ricardo while further adding to Smee's slimy scumbag pirate nature. But that's just my suggestion. Indigo is really cool and I love that the writers kept an air of mystery around him. Even getting him to take his own boat so that the sinners couldn't prod him with needless questions and reveal more than what was needed. Since he's hunting down the five calamities, I'd love to see a web novel about his journeys. Or hell, even a game, but I don't think that's happening. Lastly, Ahab and her crew were cool, I guess. Not much else to say other than Limbus Onlys can have their own Tesco one brand love town, so enjoy. Her fight was okay, but the ending was nice. The horror aspects of this canto were really appreciated, though I didn't find any of it uncomfortable or disturbing, I wholeheartedly appreciate the effort and attempt to bring good horror back into the game. I've been perishing this since day one, so really, thank you PM for all the blood vein stuff in this chapter. The new Abno fights existed, I guess. As always, they're just teasers for Railway 3. I would be lying if I said I didn't have an issue with them though. I know there are all the Abnos present in the battle pass, but come on man, where's my boy Dreaming Current? And I also genuinely and utterly thought we would get a Pinocchio fight inside the whale, so I'm disappointed we didn't. At least none of the bosses had any egregious SP drain, because that shit is the worst. What else? Um, oh, Hopkins got mentioned. Hooray for that. We learned Dante can fucking explode, which is... Eh. More blue guy members, whom I do not care about right now, and Heathcliff gets self-referential. If you know, you know. Oh, and there's this one visual bug. You see, when you get the character sheets from the files, they look like this. 
So what I have to do is go into Photoshop and take one of these heads and layer it on the sinner, pixel perfectly to get a new expression. Well, someone in Project Moon fucked up and we got this weird layering bug, so... You thought no one would notice Project Moon, but I did, I noticed! The new Millie song is a Millie song, alright. I really can't add much more because you get what you expect. A good song. I will give my appreciation though for a change in genre, finally. I asked for this in my Iceberg video and I'm utterly grateful for a bit of spice in the songs now instead of just sad sad piano times. I can't really remember the song like off the top of my head right now which is not normal for me but it's still a solid track. That's about all my thoughts for the chapter for now, more in the inevitable retrospective or if it comes up later. But the video isn't done yet, I want to have a little talk first. A lot of people in this community see me as the guy who hates Limbus Company and I get that. It's kind of the hole I've dug for myself and I can't seem to take my hands off the shovel. But if you still have that opinion of me in your mind, I need to get rid of it. I don't hate Limbus. I truly love it, but I definitely don't think it's the best thing BM has made. But that's why I'm still here. I know Project Moon can do better than what they've been doing and I want to see them through to the end. These last nine months with Limbus have been turmoil for me. Life has changed a lot, but this game has been the only thing I consistently play, and making videos for it has been my main hobby. I can't abandon Project Moon as easily as I'd want to, but I don't want to. This chapter isn't what I wanted, but it's what I needed. When the credits rolled, I cried. I fucking bawled. Canto 4's wing scene had me shed some tears, but 5's credits had me keeling on my desk flowing waterfalls. Not because of Ahab or the Millie song, but because Project Moon did it, they went and made me proud. I liked Canto 6, and I truly love Limbus Company. And for the first time since launch, I can confidently say Project Moon did it. You beautiful bastards, you made me cry. Eyes up for Canto 6, managers, and I'll see you on the flip side. My